where did it all start? Most scientists say the novel coronavirus came from nature, but there remain gaps in our knowledge about its precise origin. Some have chosen to fill those gaps with conspiracy theories, even calling COVID-19 a man-made disease. In many ways, what we don't know about the coronavirus may be hurting our efforts to contain it. As the death toll reaches over 284,000 across the globe, the world is still waiting for the full story. Welcome to this COVID-19 special. I'm Rob Watts in Berlin. It's nice to have you along with us. So, where did the new coronavirus actually come from? Scientists haven't reached a conclusive answer on that. And that's one reason why conspiracy theories and misinformation have been able to run rampant. With much of the world still in the grips of COVID-19, the story of how the virus originated remains a mystery. Beijing says it emerged from a seafood market in Wuhan. But early cases with no apparent connection to the market have cast doubt on that claim. One institution that's attracted a lot of attention is the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Scientists there had been analyzing specimens of coronavirus found in bats. This has given rise to several theories. One is that sloppy biosecurity caused the virus to be released accidentally. Another is that it was engineered in the lab, a notion the scientific community firmly rejects. My view is very clear. It did not come from the Wuhan BSL4 laboratory. And the reason for that is that the genetic sequence of the virus has been determined, and it's quite clearly an animal virus. If it had been an engineered virus, it would have some marks which showed the points at which engineering had been done. But that is not the case. Many experts believe the virus originated in bats and may have jumped to humans via an intermediary host, possibly a pangolin. Further questions have also arisen as reports suggest the virus was already spreading in Europe in December, weeks earlier than previously believed. French doctors discovered a COVID-19 case dating from December 27th in a man hospitalized near Paris. It's the earliest identified infection outside China. This shift in the timeline of the pandemic could shape the course of medical investigations. So this gives us a, a big, a whole new picture on everything. And yes, of course, it would be great if, if all uh, countries who have unspecified cases of pneumonia in the recent months and even in December and really even in November uh, would check them against um, uh, COVID-19. Further investigation in China may eventually establish the source of the outbreak. But Beijing is yet to allow such a probe, meaning key questions could remain unanswered for quite some time. Well, let's speak to Dr. Philippa Lentzos, who is a researcher in biological threats working at King's College London. How does this case in France fit in with the existing timeline we've got for the development of coronavirus? Hi, Rob, it's good to be with you. Well, the French case brings the first case known outside of China forward by a couple of weeks. So it shows that the virus was spreading earlier than we originally thought. But the index case, or the, or the very first reported case in China, was in early December. So that doesn't directly impact on how we view the origin timeline. So can we try and get to the bottom of what we do actually know so far? What do we know for sure? Well, we, we don't know a lot for sure. Uh, we don't know with any certainty how the pandemic started, but there are several possibilities. Um, the evidence that we currently have suggests the pandemic resulted from a, a natural spillover event where the virus jumped from bats to people, possibly via an interme intermediate animal species. And, and we've seen that happen before a couple of times. So in 2002, a coronavirus jumped from bats to people via civets. Um, and this is then what went on to become the SARS epidemic. And it happened again in, in 2012, when a coronavirus jumped from bats to people, this time via camels. Um, and this then became the MERS 
epidemic. Uh, there are speculations that the current COVID-19 pandemic could be uh, jumping from bats to people via pangolins, uh, but there are also other theories and we, we simply just don't know for sure. Where do we think that happened though, that transferal from animal to human? Exactly. So, so where was that spillover? Well, um, what we know is that the pandemic has natural origins. It wasn't manufactured in a lab or anything like that. Um, but what we have less evidence about is where the spillover event happened. Did it happen at the wet market in Wuhan as consistently maintained by the Chinese government? It's a likely theory. You know, wet markets where animals are slaughtered and sold on the spot provide ideal conditions for viruses to jump from one species to another. Um, and some of the early reported cases had connections to the market. But not all of the early cases had connections to the market. So one study found that three out of the four first cases, including the index case, did not have links to the market. So it's prudent to explore other possibilities. And so could, for instance... Um, yeah, I was just going to say, how, how, do we, how do we begin to work out how we fill in those gaps? Well, one of the theory is that this could be somehow related to natural basic scientific research, right? And there are various possibilities within the research um, realm that could give rise to a spillover event. So for instance, uh, could researchers working with coronaviruses in labs in Wuhan accidentally have become infected? We know that not everyone infected with coronavirus shows symptoms. So could an unknowingly infected researchers researchers showing no symptoms unwittingly have gone home to infect family, friends, or, or anyone else that he or she might have come into contact with. Another possibility would be uh, that there was an unnoticed leak of coron coronavirus from the lab, maybe from improperly incinerated waste material or from animal carcasses that found their way to rubbish bins that may, you know, that may be rats or, or cats then accessed. Um, another possibility is that an, an infection occurred when researchers were out in the field collecting viruses from bats uh, deep inside uh, mountain caves. So, so there are a number of possibilities, uh, and these are still very much open questions. Yeah, there's a, a lot of possibilities to be discounted. Thank you very much for your insight, Dr. Philippa Lentzos from King's College London. Well, now it's your chance to ask the questions. Our science correspondent, Derek Williams, has been busy Answering the queries you've been sending us here at DW, please do keep them coming. How does COVID-19 affect the brain? We've all heard by now about the most common COVID-19 symptoms, fever, a dry cough, fatigue, um, but a range of other symptoms can occur also, some of them involving the brain and central nervous system. That's not surprising, really. Other respiratory infections can also cause neurological symptoms. Um, a study from the outbreak in Wuhan found that at one point, around one in three COVID-19 patients who arrived at a hospital there had neurological problems. Um, other studies show that neurological symptoms are far from rare. They range from, from dizziness, and headaches, and impaired consciousness to the impairment of taste, smell, and vision. Um, more serious events like seizures, strokes, and encephalitis have also been reported. Although the virus has been found in the brains of people who died from the disease, Experts say that many of the neurological symptoms associated with COVID-19 will be caused by an overly aggressive immune response in the patient's body. Does SARS-CoV-2 affect reproduction in either men or women? It's still too early to say anything definitive about whether and how COVID-19 could affect human reproduction, but a recent US-based review that summarized what 79 different scientific reports had to say about the issue came to some preliminary conclusions. Um, it was based on what we know about coronaviruses in general and what we know so far about SARS-CoV-2 specifically. The results indicated that 
in men, COVID-19 could affect sperm quality for two to three months after an infection. Um, the review also said that catching the new coronavirus could cause pregnant women not to carry to full term. On the bright side, the evidence from all those studies also said COVID-19 appeared to be less fatal for pregnant women than diseases caused by other coronaviruses, SARS and MERS. But the authors really emphasized that it'll take more time and work before we can say any of this for certain. Derek Williams there. And before we let you go, wearing face masks has become the norm in many places, but they make life hard for those who rely on visual communication or facial click cues. That's why deaf people in Belgium are calling for transparent masks. Not a bad idea, after all. Not everyone working in shops or at takeaway windows knows sign language, and partially covering up their faces makes it even more challenging for deaf people to interact. Inclusion is, of course, more important at a time of heightened isolation such as this one, yeah.